Why, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with a little bit of a new channel theme that I've adjusted. Um, I'll be working on thumbnails and stuff after with my artists, but that's for that's for something separate. I don't need to show you guys that. Um, but what I wanted to go ahead and show you guys today is pretty much just a simple organization of the channel now. So it should be a lot easier for you guys to kind of like rummage through. So the first thing is I decided to put like my popular Path of Exile builds in one playlist, which I haven't really gotten to do yet too much of. I just have my Blight Guide and my Low Life Righteous Fire character. And I would presume that in this patch we would have the Berserker Righteous Fire character, which is what's going to be my League Starter. And I'll be building that later on the stream if you guys, or video if you guys want to just skip forward. Uh, so this is going to be kind of like an up to date thing. And it's cool because with this new playlist system um, that I didn't even know about, you can actually put a keyword. So for like low life righteous fire, I keyworded low life righteous fire and anything that comes up with low life righteous fire or LLRF gets thrown into this video. Same thing with the blight character. And then like I said, you know, as I continue to uh, work on this, I guess this little section here, I can put in like my poison trapper and some other stuff, but we'll work on like 3.0 builds. So I'm probably just gonna be updating this for 3.0. Uh, next up, I've got another video or another thing here for all PoE content. So this is probably like 80% of all the PoE videos. I just tagged into this one playlist that you can find here. Um, this is pretty much all the content from the 3.0 beta if you guys need to get caught up with anything. And this is a section for PoE guides here, which I'll rename this and whatnot. And this is essentially, uh, which is when I was going from like act one to act four and you know, just basically a tutorial explaining the game. I'm gonna have to redo this from uh, Acts 1 through 10 because the game is gonna be changing for that. Now this is something I know a lot of you guys don't have too much interest in, but I personally really like this. I play a lot of indie games in my side life and I don't often always bring it up or talk about it. Um, I don't really know why, I just, I don't know, sometimes I don't wanna get things spoiled. But I do like to do a lot of first impressions on games because I think it's a lot of fun. I think just in general, playing video games for a living is a lot of fun and you know, might as well keep playing new games or else you're gonna get bored of the current ones you're playing. Um, so this is gonna be like my first impressions videos and or potentially slash sponsored videos because sometimes if they offer me like a sponsored first impression, I'm still gonna give a legitimate first impression, but they're gonna be paying me money for it. Does that make sense? But uh, it doesn't mean I'm gonna skew my response in any type of way. If a game is shit, I'm gonna say a game is shit. I might sugarcoat it and say it's you know covered with some poopy sprinkles, but for the most part, if a game is shit, it's gonna be shit. Um, and if you guys want me to add like another row here, I can add another row if you want. Just let me know what you want me to add. Remember, it can't be too specific or else there's not really much of a point. Uh, and then we just have the random popular uploads, which uh, Ironically has nothing to do with Path of Exile. We got Tree of Savior, Emmy Legend, Skyforge, and then Path of Pox, which is just my trailer, which has nothing to do with Path of Exile. Actually, what's the next one? Arc Age and then Path of Exile. Alright, so now let's go ahead and jump on into the theory crafting for the Life Righteous Fire Berserker. Now the reason why I chose Life Righteous Fire Berserker as my league starter and not low life righteous fire is because life righteous fire specifically on a berserker is just so easy to get running whereas on a low life righteous fire character there is so much min maxing involved with life righteous fire you don't really have to worry about that you don't have to worry about a high level enlighten you don't have to worry about your 21 slash 23 purities you do not have to worry about you know leveling your, your discipline up to be super high level you don't have to worry about aura reservation you're not required to do uber lab right away um you don't have to fucking go out of your way to get crazy well i guess you do still want resistance on jewels so that's probably one con but in general it's just it's so much more beginner friendly to get the character going. And that's something I wanna play as of right now. I don't feel like being super tryhard with a low life RF character. So let's go ahead and build this. Now, the reason why I'm using Path of Building has nothing to do with like all this bullshit with the equipment and stats. It's just because my normal program I use, I'm unable to show you guys the nodes and I feel like it's really important that you guys can kind of see what I'm clicking. So let's go ahead and start this off as Marauder and Berserker. So we're gonna start off by just grabbing pretty much all the life that you can get, including the regeneration, that's fine. Now we're gonna level with Ground Slam, most likely into Sunder, and we're gonna be using Sunder until we complete our normal Labyrinth. Once we do normal Labyrinth, we get access to the Berserker's node called Warbringer. 
At that point, Warbringer will keep your character alive, even if you're degening like a little bit. Say you're losing like 10 to 20 health per second from your Righteous Fire. Warbringer will easily keep this topped off, no problem. You don't ever have to worry about it. Literally, like once you get Warbringer on your character, you can officially run Righteous Fire. All you need to do is cap your fire resistance and have maybe 5 to 6% life regen. You should be okay to run it at the beginning. Assuming that you're still pressing a life flask and whatnot. If you don't want to use a life flask, you don't have to. So, um, Born to Fight's not bad again. This is for like the leveling process. So if you really feel you need to get some extra damage, you've got Born to Fight and Butchery literally for 4 points. This will carry you no problem. For the next part, I do believe I came and pathed like this. Oh, actually, let me see exactly. I think it's important to go to Duelist first. Um, so let's just connect into the Duelist tree like this. I'm actually going to go pull up my actual Path of Exile to make sure that the pathing is correct as well. All right. Let's connect through our Jewel Socket and grab our Scion Life Wheel. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to pick up your whole Scion Life Wheel like right away. Um, just remember, life is damage, so if you do want to get it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting it. Um, let me really fast, like I said, I apologize, I don't mean to make like a rush video. I just want to make sure the pathing is correct because the pathing is like really wonky sometimes. Everything should be fine though. Okay, so I go down, just kidding, I'm lying. All right, so I actually connect this way instead. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna remove one, let's see. One, two, three. Because this gives us access to bloodless. Perfect, all right, that's fine. So now from here, we're gonna go up and grab our life and armor, jewel socket. Now, I did not run the life regeneration per endurance charge because I felt it wasn't necessary. And my Berserker is able to run no regen, minus max, vulnerability, 40% less recovery, 60% less recovery. You can even throw two of those mods together, like minus max vuln, minus max reduced regen, and I can still run it. I wouldn't recommend it for hardcore, but I was still able to do it, and because of that, I didn't really feel it was necessary for me to spec into the regeneration. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that out. Grab our arsonist. Now, let me just make sure everything looks good there. All right. So at this point here, you don't really need to ever grab tireless. Tireless is like a super end game node. Uh, this is what I grabbed to like push my character to 9.8k life. Although I could get a little bit more, I could still get like 10.4 to 11k depending on how much we sacrifice. So at this point, I think it's important to go for the Scion Life Wheel. So let's go ahead and grab our Scion Life Wheel. And while we're here, you might as well go two points into Shaper. And you can kind of make your decision at this point and how you want to go. So I'm just going to go two points in for Sanctity and grab Discipline and Training with the Life. Let's grab our Jewel here, Elemental Equilibrium quick recovery. Now a lot of people grab Amplify and there's absolutely nothing wrong with grabbing Amplify. I just don't really feel it's necessary to invest into AoE with our build. I feel like we get enough area of effect on our character. Elemental Overload. Now naturally you'd probably be up here a little bit earlier. You don't need to fill in all of these life loads or life nodes while you're leveling. If you feel you need damage, you know, obviously just drop some life nodes grab your elemental overload, grab your elemental equilibrium a little earlier. It really is kind of entirely on you and how you want to play your character because I guess ideally you want to grab holy fire like maybe 70 points in or not even, maybe even 60 points in and not necessarily 95 points in. Okay, so this is pretty much majority of the nodes on the tree here that you can see for my life righteous fire character. Uh, one big thing I did forget to pick up actually was combat stamina. Always, always, always grab combat stamina. I think that's pretty much all of the starter nodes for the Life Righteous Fire character. The other things to grab is just like, for example, like here. And I feel like there's like something big and I don't know what it is because this is only 107 points. I wish I could just import my character from the beta in, but I cannot do that, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. I think that's majority. If you guys see something, obviously, you know, just spec into it. My apologies. So some of the next important things, let's talk about the ascendancy choices. So definitely Warbringer as your first. 
And then in my opinion, you want to go for Aspect of Carnage, and then your Uber Lab would be Rite of Ruin. Now I do know that Berserker takes increased damage from targets, but Rite of Ruin helps cancel that out, especially like when you're when you're like getting into your early maps and stuff. Uh, well, not early maps, but in general when you're mapping and not bossing, because the 6% reduced damage taken, if you've killed recently, will be up 95% of the time while you're mapping. The only exception is bosses that don't summon adds, which is majority of bosses, but even then some bosses do still summon adds and it's okay. Um, but on the plus side is if you don't have the damage or mitigation active, you have a 25% attack speed stay right up, which is like pretty solid. That's like almost a white Quicksilver. Uh, because Quicksilver is what 30% movement speed, and all you you want attack speed and movement speed for shield charge. So that is very very important. I guess let me just fill in tireless over here, and there's really not much else to do with the notes. If you want to be I guess a little hipster and do something with mind over matter, you're you know feel free to do that. I didn't really feel it was necessary with my character. If you want to squeeze out a little bit more damage, you can drop Vitality and run Dual Curse like um, Blasphemy Flam or Blasphemy Elemental Weakness. You could come over here for Explosive Impact, although I don't really think it's necessary. You could potentially come three points over for Cruel Preparation Heart and uh, Breath of Flames. I don't really think that's too necessary either. You could come down three points here for uh, Devotion plus a Jewel Socket. You could, I mean, honestly, for three points, I would probably just grab Soul of Steel to help. It helps with the all resistance and the armor is not too bad. Um, and then the last couple points is probably just Endurance Charges, Endurance Charges plus Endurance Charge Regeneration, or even the Templar Regeneration here, because it's 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and then 5% max life. Um, so this is not really too bad of an option either. So you're a little flexible with the points you can go. Um, but this is pretty much majority of the character uh, that, that we have. So let me go ahead and go into some gear priorities and whatnot with this build. So this character is currently in the 3.0 beta, and this is applying after nerfs such as like the Witchfire Brew nerf. You can see this is like a 59% increased damage over time. Actually, this is a... I don't even think... This might even be a legacy one, but it doesn't matter. They basically nerfed Witchfire, so... Instead of it going to like 70%, it goes to like 40% or like 30%. It doesn't really matter like too much. So let's go ahead and jump into su uh, some uh, requirements for gear. So in my opinion, let's start with the weapon. Your weapon, you have a couple options. So I would recommend Bright Beak. Bright Beak gives you the ability to basically shield charge super, super fast. The reason why that's important is your shield charge is going to be applying elemental equilibrium via either your rings so you can get like flat cold or flat lightning on your rings and amulet and or you can just use like an added cold instead of like an increased critical strikes for example the reason why we run increased critical strikes with our current build is because it procs elemental overload and being as this character is level 92 when you're running red maps with enfeebleon your accuracy is really bad like i have 50 percent accuracy right now so that's pretty bad so bright beak easily allows me to to keep up my elemental overload stacks so weapon, you can use Bright Beak or, you know, vice versa. Literally anything that has elemental damage and attack speed, you can use. So Doriani's Catalyst. I know this doesn't look like it. It's just skinned over. Doriani's is very good. It gives a ton of increased damage, like a ton, and gives great attack speed. Well, okay, attack speed. You can craft a Scepter. You can actually craft Scepters better than a Doriani's Catalyst if you really want to. Um, do not use... There's a weapon that hinders targets. I forgot what it's called. Uh, do not use that. Be here we go. Singularity. Singularity doesn't work because um, it says increased damage with hits and Righteous Fire does not hit targets. So weapon has been finished. Your helmet, you have a couple options for your helmet. I personally recommend just crafting a rare helmet or just buying a rare helmet because with the new hybrid rules, you can get like 140 life plus like a 50 strength roll. That's like ridiculous for you. You can use, um, there's a helmet, I forgot what it's called. Let me just go look it up for you guys really fast. It's a helmet that gives 100 flat life regen per second. Oh, let's see. Life, no? Okay, we'll just, we'll just search life then, I'm sorry. Where is it? It's here somewhere. Here we go, Vol's Vision. Vol's Vision gives you... 32 fire res, so the fire resist is not bad, gives you some decent armor, has a little bit of chaos resistance, 
And you get 12% max life if no worn items are corrupted and regenerate 100 life per second if no worn items are corrupted. So this is not too bad either. It's an okay piece. The 12% max life though is only, only equivalent to like 300 life. Whereas like my current helmet with a 90 life roll is equal to more than that. Uh, I could be wrong on that exact calculation there, but uh, it, it's still not a bad helmet to get going like right away. So next up would be your accessories. So accessories and jewelry is very, very important. So if we just go back, I, well, I don't need to go back to it, but you have a couple options you can use. Ideally, your best in slot is most likely going to be an opal ring crafted similar to this. So this has the implicit for 25% elemental damage. It was crafted with an increased fire damage essence, which you can find over here. I think they're called anger maybe, these ones. These are movement speed. Where's fire damage? Here you go. Fire damage increase. And then ideally you're going for as much life as possible with as much strength as possible. Those are like your ultimate goals in terms of getting damage on rings. Before this, you can just use whatever you want. Just get resistance wherever you can. Uh, alternatively, you can use things like pyre rings. Pyres give up to 70% increased burning damage. So they're really not too bad. You do have other things like Lori's lant not Lori's Lantern, sorry. Um, there was a new ring that got buffed. Let me see if I can remember what it's called. Lahoop is okay, but Lahoop doesn't give you any, um, uh, like, life. So that's kind of, you, you kind of have to figure out what you want to do. But Pyre Rings are honestly, like, super fucking good. Your amulet should be a marble amulet. You can alternatively use a Zoff's Heart. Um, but the reason why I like marble amulets is because, again, you can essence craft them with fire damage. Uh, and you can get up to 1.6% life regen per second. 1.6% life regen per second for my character is going to be somewhere around like 160, 170 life per second. You can see here. Actually, it's closer to like 200 because I drop life as well. But uh, the reason why Zoff's heart is good, you do not want the upgraded one, just the baby one. You get a little bit of life, you get some strength, you get fire damage. The fire damage outweighs the essence roll, but it says covers cover enemies in ash when they hit you. I believe when an enemy is covered in ash, they lose like 20% fire res or 30% fire res. So this is a pretty cool item. You pretty much only need to use it for bossing. You don't really need to use it for anything else. Uh, you can see my health only goes down by like 100. It doesn't even go down by that much because mine is not like super well crafted. So this is another option to think of uh, when using because it's honestly like not that bad. For your shield, absolutely, you want to use a Rise of the Phoenix. Uh, the only other thing I could see using is like a crafted shield with like retarded amounts of life and strength with block chance and everything else. But you're just losing so much maximum fire resistance. I don't really see it being necessary at all. You can use a Saffles frame and uh, you can go spell block. If you use a Saffles frame, uh, frame plus a Rumi's concoction, you can get like 45 to 50 spell block. But remember, you do lose your normal block. But that's an interesting option and you'd only lose four max fire res as well. So as for your chest piece, you definitely want to use a Calm's Heart. There's not really any replacement to a Calm's Heart. It gives you a ton of life. It gives you an increased fire damage roll. Uh, so an example is if I were to say pull off my Calm's Heart, I'd go to 7.8k HP. Say I were to put on a Belly of the Beast instead. A Belly rolled at 36% puts me from 7.8 to 8.6. And again, going from 8.6 to 9.8 from a Calm's Heart with the additional increased fire damage on it as well. Um, so that's definitely a goal that you guys want to move towards. For your boots, I would highly recommend grabbing a pair of Calm's Roots. And the reason why is if I were to take off these boots, I lose almost 800 HP. They also give you immunity to knockback, which doesn't really matter, but you get unwavering stance for free. So you save one point, which is pretty cool. You also get immunity to temporal chains, which is great because you can already run so many different types of map mods, right? Furthermore, you also gain the ability to, um, uh, you're immune to chilled ground. Even though chilled ground was nerfed recently, you're still immune to it and you're immune to freeze at the same time because of what the boots give you. Then ideally for Labyrinth, you want to make sure you get a 2% life regen. You don't have to get this immediately. It's not really required. It's just something you really want to work towards because that 2% regen is like 180 life regen per second for me, which is just very good, especially again, when you're running like those minus max, um, you know, vulnerability, etc. 
Your belt, you can use a belt of the deceiver. Now, just to show you guys an example of how much life you would go up with a proper belt, I do have a pretty strong leather belt here. So it's 98 life with 47 strength with a 37 life roll versus my belt of the deceiver. I go up about 400 HP. But one thing to note about belt of the deceiver is that it intimidates nearby enemies, which means that they take 10% increased damage from all sources of damage, which includes Righteous Fire. How, or, and additionally, you take reduced extra damage from critical strikes, which means you actually mitigate elemental damage as well, assuming you were to get crit. I feel that this mod is very good, especially when the Berserker takes increased damage and the fact that I have such a large life pool, I don't wanna just be a meat shield. You know, I wanna be able to mitigate damage as well. So last but not least, and definitely one of the most important would be our gloves. So you wanna make sure you delirium craft your gloves just like your low life righteous fire character. If you do not have an essence of delirium, there is, I don't remember what the essence is called. There's an essence you can use on your helmet, which gives 30% more elemental damage. It is the exact same thing as a delirium when it comes to affecting righteous fire's damage. It's just helmets are a bit harder to roll from the, than gloves in my opinion. But that is definitely an option. You know, if the prices are a little too whack, just go ahead and essence craft your helmet instead of your gloves. And ideally, you're just looking for as much life as possible, pretty much with everything else. The only mod that you could get on gloves that would brick it is if you got flat fire to attacks, because that means when you shield charge, you are inflicting fire damage, which messes up your elemental equilibrium. Because remember, righteous fire does not actually apply elemental equilibrium because it doesn't hit. So while I was leveling for my bandits, I also decided to help Oak. Oak gives you 2% physical mitigation, 1% life regen per second, and an additional 20% uh, increased physical, which doesn't mean anything. I don't really think it matters too much. I actually think I may even kill Oak come release because those two points would be 10K life. It'd be an extra 200 life. But uh, I don't really think that choice matters too much. And um, one other thing is Trimnor's Resolve is an okay helmet. I know people are going to ask about this. I've, I didn't even notice it. It's not really that bad. I wouldn't really recommend it endgame, but it's not too bad to use while leveling. That pretty much concludes majority of the stuff. I'm just going to go over my links uh, for you guys as well. So in my Righteous Fire, we are running Conch Effect, Elemental, Elemental Focus, Righteous Fire, and Burn Damage. In terms of quality gems, it doesn't really matter. Just do not quality your RF. It's irrelevant. Your elemental focus is an increase, your conch effect is an increase, your burn damage is an increase, and your ink AOE is an increase, meaning that all of these gems get the same benefit from quality. Ideally, I'd go with elemental focus and burn damage first, uh, and then either conch or ink AOE as your last ones, because these are going to be swapped out continuously for the bosses that you're fighting. In my weapon, we've got Enduring Cry and Rallying Cry. Uh, I also have my ink AOE up here because I just pull it down for my conch effect like that. It just makes it very smooth. One thing to note is you could remove Rallying Cry and you could also drop Vitality. And then this would be two points for like Blasphemy Flammability. So for my helmet, we have Fortify, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, and Increase Crit. If you don't really need crit, you can use Culling Strike. A quality Culling Strike does give you 10% increased attack speed, which just kind of adds up for your Shield Charge. As for our shield, we've got Vitality, Purity of Fire, Vol Lightning Trap, and that covers pretty much every single one of our links. Now, one thing to note that is that in this patch, Vol Lightning Trap was nerfed. They nerfed Shocking Ground, so it's only, I believe, 20% more damage opposed to 50. It could be 30, but the build is still fine from it. Um, just to confirm, you don't need to have Vitality on at all to run this character later on. And my Purity of Fire is only 20. If you do manage to get a 23 Purity of Fire, you can get an extra plus one max res. I just didn't really feel like going through the hassle of trying to use an unset and getting like a plus two or plus three unset ring. All right, I'm pretty sure that concludes pretty much everything with the character. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Before I end this video, I just wanna go over one more thing, which is my flask setup. Witch Fire Brew, definitely best in slot for what you're trying to do. It gives you a free curse. You don't have to worry about links. Amazing flask. Ruby Flask, I have of Remove Bleed. Ideally, I would put Remove Shock on your, on your Ruby because Shock is the most dangerous thing for RF because when you're shocked, you take more damage from your own Righteous Fire. I'm running a Silver Flask instead of a Quick Silver because I believe it's better for your Shield Charge. And this has my Reduce Shock. I have a Basalt with Remove Curse. And I have a Sulfur with increased movement speed, 
uh, just for some additional zoom zoom. Alternatively, if you want it to be more tanky, drop your chemist, uh, chemist silver flask of grounding. Roll grounding on, like I said before, on one of your other flasks. Replace your sulfur flask with whatever was needed. So if you drop your remove shock, put remove shock on your sulfur. And then you can run a Rumi's concoction right here as well. And having a Rumi's on would boost my armor up to probably like 13k. Here's a, a white granite flask. Rumi's, actually this would put me to 16.5k. Meaning if I had Soul of Steel, we'd probably be about 20,000 uh, armor with a granite flask on. Specifically a Rumi's concoction. Anyway, now that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much about it. <laughs> Remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I'll post one more video, uh, probably comparing life versus low life righteous fire. Uh, and that's pretty much just for bossing. But that's going to be for some future content. Anyway, like I said, hope you guys have a wonderful time. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.